Well, it seems that I may have found an external SSD solution that could become my primary external NVMe enclosure for just about anything that I can throw at it. And for those of you that have been here before, you thought I forgot about you, didn't you? What is up, you beautiful humans? It has been two years since my last upload, and I honestly did not mean for it to be that long, truly. But let's get into this solution that I found, and you and I can catch up a little bit later on where I've been. So for those of you who may be looking to save a little bit of money on an external SSD enclosure that is also a very simple DIY solution, I need to stress this, but it offers a little something extra. I do think that this setup from Kanye, Con Yeed, can anybody be Kanye? But I've been testing this thing for the last few months and this really could be a consideration. Now I've also tested several external SSD solutions on this channel and so much of this will just really be an iterative update to that content. So let's get some of the technical specs out of the way and let me preface to those of you who aren't that technical, you really do not need to be to use this type of enclosure. But what we have on board is a JHL 7440 controller for that Thunderbolt 3 USB 4.0 protocol and 40 gigabits per second along with that JMS 583 for that USB 3.1 Gen 2 protocol at 10 gigabits per second. Now this supports up to an eight terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD and the advertised maximum speed is 32 gigabits per second, which is very close to what I've been finding in my testing. And you'll remember from my previous videos, you're not going to get that full 40 gigabits per second because some of that allocation on the bus has to be reserved for other peripherals. DisplayPort being one of the primaries. And I know for the beginner, we did get a little technical there and I'll try to bring this back to the surface a little bit, but there is a fan inside and I am a fan. Uh, this thing does run cool. So I've only tested one other enclosure with a built-in fan and it does still work even years later. And that company unfortunately went out of business. It really is kind of sad, but I have to say that this particular enclosure plugged into a test machine for months, I had it. I was just setting it on like a bench and just had it running, and the fan is still working in this thing. Pretty great. So, I'm not sure if that's like a great test or anything like that, but the fan did run and it is very low level. You don't really hear much coming from the enclosure. But as far as how it handles those thermals, it when it's really under that heavyish load when transferring large files, um, these really are short bursts of a workload that you you may be pushing. Uh, in these SSDs, but the fan does keep this aluminum enclosure quite cool. And I don't really use the thermal pad that was included in the packaging. I just don't really feel like it was necessary, but you will also receive an 80 centimeter Thunderbolt 3 cable, as well as a much shorter 10 centimeter USB 4.0 cable. But both of those will hold up to that 32 gigabits per second transfer protocol. And there's also this ability to connect a separate power source for those devices that really can't bus power the enclosure, which would primarily be phones if you were someone who wanted to connect this to a phone. So if you ever find yourself wanting or needing it in that particular use case, it is baked into it. Now I haven't mentioned that this also has a built-in SD card reader in it, which is kind of nice, but I do need to highlight that this is for UHS two cards only, UHS-2. I have quite a few of the UHS-1 cards and I've been using these without any issue, but as far as in this enclosure, they are not recognized. So basically, get with the times, my friends. Okay, so let me reference some of the previous testing that I've done because I've worked with these enclosures on video editing projects, 3D modeling and animation, running an operating system through virtual machines, and literally installing an entire operating system on these, as well as gaming, both on Mac primarily, but also using uh, these and testing these on Windows-based PCs. Now, what I need to say, I really need to emphasize because I've said this many, many times before, with an enclosure like this, your real bottleneck is going to be your CPU and or the GPU. The programs that you're running on these devices will only be able to read and write at speeds that the hardware can handle. So when you're looking for that setup that has the fastest throughput, just understand that the 30 gigabits per second isn't gonna even come close to this in these situations, sustained that is. But there of course are those short burst situations where it'll help such as transferring those large files, which I have tested this over and over again. Now I did run some synthetic benchmarks for those of you that like to see this, but just understand that this is really just one small data point, but I do see these oftentimes that they're shared and like that's the end all be all, but it's not. 
The machines that I did test on though were the M1 Max MacBook Pro. I still have it. That thing is crushing it every day. The M2 MacBook Air, and of course a much older Intel MacBook Pro that does have the Thunderbolt 3 protocol. I have tested this on a PC as well, a couple of them that I have around the house, but really the Mac OS is pretty much like where my primary use case is because that's like where my creative work happens. But I also ran a test using a non-Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4.0 certified cable. And what I did find on all of these machines on the synthetic benchmark is that instead of it defaulting to the 10 gigabits per second protocol, it did actually show me speeds at around 20 gigabits per second. And of course the controllers in something like a SanDisk, like a, one of those pre-built enclosures that I have at, like I've tested those several times, but that advertised speed on those in my testing hasn't been able to replicate those speeds, but rather they just really default to 10 gigabits per second. And again, I know this isn't new, but this is why I usually don't recommend spending that extra money on those gen two by two enclosures, because really on these Macs, they're just gonna default to the 10 gigabits per second. But why I recommend these enclosures, even if you are a complete novice, is that if you're gonna be investing in hardware that pretty much has no way of upgrading anything internally, which we're starting to even see in those Windows-based laptops more and more, at least you'll have something that can save you quite a bit of money when you compare the price to capacity on your storage and you can swap out those drives with very little effort. And I still have many of the pre-built SSDs in my inventory, and I'm not saying that they are a bad choice. They really aren't, it's a great, starting point. This is actually what I started with. And I'm also not saying that I'm not going to be purchasing any more devices that have hardware soldered to the board because right now, I mean, I'm good. I'm content. I haven't really bought anything new, but I do continue to still look for pieces that do offer the ability to change out or upgrade those components. And for those of you working on devices that don't have the built-in SD card reader, I do think that this is a great option as long as, again, you're using UHS-2 cards, but more specifically for those of you who have reached out several times about getting started with creative workflows, and you've asked me a lot about using the M-Series MacBook Airs, Yes, you can certainly get started with those devices, but you will be limited when it comes to running multiple apps and programs simultaneously and bumping up against that thermal limitation. This isn't the case for everyone, but I just have to put it out there again because those devices do not have that built-in SD card reader. So again, you kind of have sort of a one and done situation. So in an aluminum nutshell, I would recommend this enclosure hands down. It does seem very well built. It's got the throughput that excites many of you out there. And of course the fan that is super quiet and keeping those thermals very well managed in this setup. So good job, Kanyeed, Kanyeed, whatever it is. As always, my friends, I truly appreciate your time here. So you go out there and rock those faces and I'll catch you right back here on the next one. And hopefully it's not two years from now. I also hope that I remember how to upload a YouTube video and the thumbnail. Do people even care about thumbnails anymore?